welcome back to my channel or at least the part of the channel where I speak about my hair uh, on today's video it's going to be reviewing all the products I'm using currently or you know ever so often on my hair and their ingredients so not so reviewing if they work or not just but reading the ingredients and see if they have anything bad like silicones or paraben and the amount of it because uh, I know the science isn't clear whether it's good or bad for you, but I just want to get a idea of the amount of these products that I use that have these ingredients and see if I can wean off of them, especially if these are products that uh, I kind of use not really regularly or I don't think they work on my hair. So um, just so I can have a better, you know, educated use of those products. Um, and then after that, I'm probably going to have to decide what to do with them, uh, either discard them entirely or finish the bottle and then be done. Um, so yeah, it just, we'll see. Um, so there's quite an interesting mix. You can probably see the over here. There's some that, you know, I've always used since, you know, France and I bring them back or my mom sends them or whatnot. I uh, have some that I've used that are from Latin America and then there's some U.S. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a mix. That should be interesting. A lot of them, especially um, especially the ones from the US or that you know I've learned about in France I've used for years. So my guess is they're going to be bad because it wasn't as popular to not use those bad ingredients. So it will be interesting and uh, let's get to it. So the products I'm going to count as silicones are the one finishing in coal, cone, conol, xan, and for paraben, anything that has the word paraben. I'm starting with my hair polisher from Fantasia. And ingredient-wise, it starts really bad. It starts with cyclopensiluxan, dimethicone, and dimethiconol which are three silicones right here, the first three ingredients. Then even later, we get a little bit more with trimethicone, but I guess it doesn't matter, it really is bad. Then we start with my first Wordscop product from the Gliss line, and it is the Oil Elixir. And I'm not a big fan of the first two ingredients, which are cyclomethicone and dimethicanol, which is two silicones right there in the first two ingredients. In that same line of the Gliss and the uh, Ultimate Oil Elixir line, this is the serum, and it's been one of my favorite sprays to add shine to my hair. And I'm gonna count on the wrong hand here, on the paraben hand. And the second ingredient is cyclomethicone, and the third one is triziloxan, which are two silicones. And lastly, in that Ultimate Oil Elixir line, I have the breast detangling milk. And when I look at it, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Second ingredient, cyclomethicone. Second one, phenyl trimethicone. And then a little bit later, I have dimethicone and then dimethicone. So four silicones in this one. The next line at Schwarzkopf that I'm going to look at is the liquid silk. And that was the first line that I was really loyal to because they were making my hair feel really silky and smooth. So I'm going to start with the conditioner. And it's not that great. It's a little further down, but it does have some dimethicone, and then a little later it has some uh, dimethiconol. So it's a little further down in the products, but it does have silicone. And now I'm moving on to the shampoo, and the shampoo surprisingly has no silicone. It does have some PEG silicones, but they're water soluble, so I'm not counting them. I'm pretty stoked about that. Now I'm moving on to my OG's living conditioners that I've literally been using for as long as I've been doing wash and go, so about 10 years, especially for the green one. But I'm gonna start with the orange one, which is the Instant Restoration. It has dimethicanol, some dimethicone pretty early on, and then we move on to the methylparaben, and then a little bit later we have some cyclobenzyloxan. That's a lot.
Then my OG one, the green one for the curls. This one also has some dimethicanol pretty early on and then some methyl paraben. But it looks like that's it. So I'm kind of surprised there's only one per category since it's the same brand. But, you know, that's what it is. And then the last one, thankfully, has the ingredients on the side and kind of like the same surprise where it has some dimethicanol and then some methyl paraben, but that's it compared to the first one that has a lot more. This one I bought in France when I ran out of my other living conditioner and honestly I mean I'm looking at it and I can see some dimethicone but it's not something that I'll keep using anyway so I'm not too worried about this one. Next is my Art Naturals Argan Hair Mask and as I'm looking at the ingredients they are a lot but I'm actually not finding any paraben or silicones. Unfortunately, this one doesn't really work on my hair that well, so it's all good and great, but I'm not going to keep using it. Moving on now to my olive oil replenishing conditioner, which has been a big product for me forever. And I'm really anxious to look at the ingredients because I really, really love that product. And I'm seeing this one propylene glycol, when I'm not sure about. I'm going to have to check this out. But then anyway, a little bit later, there is some dimethicone, but it's really far behind in the ingredients. It's like the fifth to last. So it still has some silicones. Next is my Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Co-Wash Conditioner Cleanser. And it says on the side anyway that it has no sulfates, no parabens, no phthalate, no paraffin, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just gonna check for good measure here. And indeed, there's none of what's been mentioned, so, you know, I kind of knew that. Then I move on to another conditioner that I've been using for years. It is the Hollywood Beauty Olive Cholesterol Super Shine and Moisturize Deep Conditioning Cream for Damaged Hair. And I know it's old and I'm pretty sure I'm going to find some, you know, bad products in it. And sure enough, I found some methylparaben, some propylparaben. And I'm going to count right now the propylene glycol, but, you know, later in my conclusion, we'll see that it's not that bad. But we do have a total of two parabens, which is more than enough. Next up is my Sheer Moisture Manuka Honey and Mephora Oil Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. Since it's a Shea Moisture product, it says on the side, no sulfates, no paraben, no phthalate, etc, etc. But I'm still giving a quick look to make sure that's correct. But I'm pretty sure we're good on this one. And I'll move on to my favorite protein treatment. It is the Avalon Affirm Conditioning Relaxer System. And it does have a lot of ingredients, but I never anticipated what it would contain. And you know, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I do not see any paraben or any silicones. Um, so yeah, that's a yes for me. Another leave-in that I bought because I ran out of mine, it is the Cream of Nature Pure Honey Not Away Leave-In Detangler. And I'm expected to see some silicone in it. And then the third ingredient is dimethicone. And then a little later, I see some dimethicanol for a total of two silicone because I'm not supposed to count that propylene glycol. Next, I'm looking at the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In Plus Keratin. And I am seeing some, some methyl paraben and, and some propyl paraben. So it has two paraben ingredients in it. Not supposed to count that propyl and glycol again. Not sure what I'm signaling with my other fingers here. Now the holy grail of everyone that likes sleek edges and gelled hair. It is the Eco Styler, the olive oil version, and the top sticker tells you what it does not have. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't have what I'm looking for, but I'm just giving it a quick look just in case. To finish, I'm looking at my Joico Moisture Recovery line, and this is what I've been using for the past year or so, and I'm realizing it spilled on the bed. It looked like the conditioner wasn't closed right. That's great, so I'm gonna start with it so I can go and clean it up after. 
and I am seeing some dimethicone pretty early on in the ingredients. It is actually the fifth one, so I'm not too, too happy about that. It's all I am finding. Now moving on to the shampoo, and the shampoo has something that isn't in the list of what we're looking for, but it literally says silicone quaternium 16, so I'm gonna con that one. And then a little bit later, I see some methyl paraben, so it is one of each. And then to finish, I am looking at my moisture recovery treatment balm, and for sure the third ingredient is dimethicone, and then a little bit later, it is an aminopropyl dimethicone, it is closer to the end of the ingredients, and then finally the propylene glycol, that I probably am not supposed to count, but here we are, two silicones in this one as well. So the results are in. 90% of my products have at least um, silicones in them. Um, a few also have parabens, so I don't know what that means. To be quite frank, I know I probably put them aside, especially this one. Um, it had like all sorts of stuff, which is kind of weird because I've been using this one the most religiously because it's the one for the curls. This one, I just wanted to try it because uh, it's like, you know, it's, I like the brand, so I figured oh, maybe I'll try this one. So I haven't used it yet even, but for example, this one has like two types of, color, of um, silicones and then two parabens too. And this one doesn't, for example. It has just one type, one or two. So I don't know. I'll probably keep using this one. It's really disappointed because uh, a lot of the ones that I've been using for years have um, like both or at least silicone. To be frank, I mean, there's only a few products that don't have any. Um, most of my brand names, like the Gl Gliss and Schwarzkopf, like these, and like this entire line, they have it. So I'm not really surprised, I kind of expected it because hey, big bucks, big companies, um, they're going to use the, the mass production things that they discovered in the 60s was cheaper. But um, So I'm not really surprised. Some of the other ones I'm surprised, like <clears throat> this one, I don't know why I expected this one to not have it, but it has... It has some, um, if you see also on my face and when I did my review, some of them I wasn't sure because a lot of them had that, what's it called, that propylene, propylene glycol, almost all of them had it. And then halfway through, especially when I looked at the Shea Moisture, I can't say that word, Moisture, um, it said no propylene glycol. So, to me, it meant, well, does that mean it's bad? And also because it ends in COL, coal, which is kind of the sign for silicones, too. Um, but then I just read about it before I did that conclusion, and it's actually, I don't know, it's like a, it's not that dangerous. It's not dangerous at all, even. It's non-toxic. So, I'll probably just discount it. You can just discount some of them, and I wasn't sure to begin with, so it's fine. I probably have to do a quick, you know, rearrangement of which one I started to can the propylene glycol on to just move them on the safe side. But anyway, if they had one, they probably had at least silicones anyway. So, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Um, I'll have to rethink what I'm doing with my products and definitely pay more attention at the, you know, at the. Um, the different labels and stuff, but I don't also want to become super stringent because I do have to do what's best for my hair and if it works for my hair, then I'll just keep doing it uh, until it doesn't, especially as I'm transitioning. So that's my conclusion. Let me know in the comments if you use products exclusively, exclusively that have none of the ones that I looked at on purpose or if you kind of just don't care and use what works for your hair i'll be interested to know and if you have ones that you know for a fact work with every type of hair and you swear by it make sure to leave them a comment i'll give them a try so i'll see you later and thanks for watching